Remember this song we used to sing? <coughs> and I'm every sure time I, I pass and see my face in the looking glass, I tip my hat and say, How do you do you feel? You waste my life away. You remember that? I sure we used to sing that all the time. But another thing, Ethel, uh, uh, if you remember correctly, remember Bill Bowlby worked at Flow Sickfield. Right. And he was a very dear friend of, of Mom and Pops. Right. And that's the way we really got in show business because he took us to a rehearsal on 59th Street, I think it was 6th Avenue, where they had, it used to be a, a theater there, and near there was a, a riding a stable where people used to go riding right. Central Park. And we went just to look, look that's and all. Mr. Uh, Mr. Baldry had us sitting in the orchestra looking at the rehearsal, and Mr. Leslie came down and got us and put us up on stage because we were really uh, well formed for such youngsters, you know. We had a nice figure and whatnot. Yeah, right. And and uh, Mr. Vody said, they're not uh, uh, for this show. They're with me. They're just looking at it. So he said, uh, Mr. Uh, Leslie said, well, let them have some fun. Let them come with it. Let's see if they can do a time step. And you know, we always could dance. And right, we could right. Do a little something. So we got up there and we got hooked, really. And we got home. We was raving about it. And uh, Mr. Bodie said, I never should have taken him to the theater. Because we started raving and telling Mother we wanted to be in this show. That's what we wanted to so do. So Mr. Bodie, he felt so sorry for us. He, and it was summertime. And the show was going on the uh, road for two or three weeks or something. And he said, let them go. I'll take care of them. He said, then we can go back to school when they come back, you know. And we never did go back to school. <laughs> we got hooked then. And, and uh, no, Julia wait a minute, Julia, picture. no, she was still in school. She was too small. And we went with that show, and we came back. <laughs> we were in Dixie to Broadway with Florence Mills, and we came back, Florence Mills opened at the Winter Garden. Right. And you went into the into the Alabama Club, because the, both of the, the uh, nightclubs, Street and Broadway. Were, they were both uh, uh, running at the same, same time. time. Right. And then, do you know what I never hear nobody say nothing about? The old mm -hmm. Hippodrome in New York, and do you know that uh, we played there fl with Florence Mills Florence as Mills. an act? Right. I remember right. when and they had the animals down underneath there. Yeah, right. and nobody ever seems to I say anything about that. I remember. I even mentioned that. I've never heard. No, yeah, and then I heard. I, I know you, you lately. And, and then you after are. that, after that, uh, uh, I, I, old time uh, actors. Dixie to Broadway uh, uh, turned into Blackbirds, like, and we went to Europe, and they had a second uh, audition here. That's when Julia joined the, the second edition. Cause 1928. Yeah, because we'd already been to Europe, you know. Right. So really, that's where we started. I was in my started. second year. Yeah, well, this, this is when we but really started. But you know what I want to remind you of? What? I was Cinderella without a godmother. <laughs> Why you that's how I felt. But listen, when I first went to, to Europe this in... Day. Wait a minute. When I first went to Europe in 1926, yeah. and Bricktop was... Was way up there, right. and Josephine Baker, That's and you right. almost went to right. Europe well, with Josephine, Josephine Baker, Baker and Mother wouldn't let you go, because Europe seemed so far away. I was that frightened time. too. That's right, but well, I, well, I wonder far. what your life would have been like if you uh, went along. Different. With, I don't know. Yeah, it it would have been great. It wasn't for you. It wasn't for me to go, yeah. but she begged my mother to let me go. And yeah, I remember. And anyhow, Brick Top was like a mother. She's always been a dear friend. And in Europe, there. Bricktop introduced us to the biggest heads in Europe. We used oh, to go and we used to go to her nightclub and Bricktop looked she at took her. Care like of a me. mother hen. Like I was a baby. Oh, she was. But wonderful. you and Julie went there together, and I was 1929. 29. But at first, mm -hmm. I went there by myself in 26. Yeah, she went in 26. And then Florence Mills died in 27, and that was one of the biggest. I was a flower girl. It was at, it was at Abyssinia, yeah. Abyssinia Church. Well, so was I. I mean, and that was when Florence died, and she and. I don't hear people talking too much about Florence Mills, and she was one of the greatest. 
You know that. Greatest stars we've oh, had. Oh, everybody. Oh, every, but everybody in Europe knew about it. Right. So the from world. then on, we yeah. were in show business. First. And we kind of got exactly. a stuck in show business there. Right. Then, then I started working at the Cotton Club. You and worked at the Cotton Club. You worked at the Cotton Club. Who can remember all the clubs we worked at? Club Alabama, Connie's in, but everything. But in, in 33. Wait a minute. Then you started making the movies. Not, not then. Well, in I don't remember exactly. Well, I'll tell you. In 33. I went to Monte Carlo. Just a minute. I went to Monte Carlo. Carlo the Jimmy with, with, what no, band no, was with, that? Uh, with um, Lucky Miller and his band. band. Yeah, that's Me right. Me and a little girl be. by the name of uh, Mary Hart. That's I, right. I often wonder where she is till this day. Yeah. But she and I had an act Probably with fine. Snake Hips. <laughs> the original yeah. Snake Hips. No, no. Sna snake Hip Tucker or the, the second the, one? The second one. The second one. Well, oh. anyway, it was Snake Hips. The hip. cute one that we were there in Pennington, my friend. <laughs> oh, Julie, let's don't go into all that. No, no, I'm just saying that yeah, that was my friend. Oh, but anyway, yeah. we were there all summer, and it was great. I came back, you know, in September. That's September. Well, in other words, and we worked at the Sporting Club Casino in yeah, Monte Carlo, I and went to Nice. But in other words, we were there, from we, then we, on, it was show business. We, we went to Nice, and, and, and we went there, to France. There. I mean, we, you know, we went to France, uh, Paris, and didn't everybody and have a ball? Hey, Ethel, it's just you know what I. The only time I ever worked with you and Lucian. The three of us together, Connie's in and, and uh, Gladys Bentley. 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 Gladys Look, Ethel, if you think back, when I left show business, I loved it. You can believe that. But it was a thing that was happening then, all over, everywhere was show business. And my I color I moved down, downtown. I know it's not at that particular point, or maybe it moved down, I don't know. I'm talking about myself. That just. I knew no out because shows that were even traveling, anything, uh, they wouldn't take me south no way. They never had. They never did. I looked too white. I don't know if that's been a blessing or a curse. I just know I just did what I did, and I enjoyed what I did. I'd been all over the world anyway, practically. And you know, even after that, way late, I went back around a few places like Africa. Spain, Italy, right. French Riviera, right. everything. So I've had a ball in spite of it all looking like, but I don't even know why. But you know what? I went to photography, remember? And you know what? There 20, three months less than 21 years. I know you stayed there a long time. Right. And they loved me then. They were good. Only I got mugged so bad. If I could ever catch those muggers, whoo! But it's one of those things. I had to resign. But then I worked in Hammock and Slimmer, 145 East 57th Street, for practically 10 years. They were wonderful to you there. Beautiful, too. I always worked with beautiful people, no matter where I was. And you can believe it. I will say. This happened to me on an amputee now. I feel, uh, well, I sure feel different. I ain't gonna lie about it. I ain't gonna never feel the same. But, well, that's I nice. have Something some responsibility, and that's you and Lucia. Oh, you're the baby, huh? <laughs> yeah, I got responsibility. You all always looked after me, didn't you? Sure. So I'm gonna look after you. I might get sweet steaks, and I get a lot of money. We ain't gonna worry about nothing, right? Right. <laughs> Good enough. So, well, I'm the oldest, the oldest girl that is in my family. Oh, yeah, family. so old, old as a fact. Oh, that's true. Now we got that's got that's got that's got that's got Well, that's what I
You know, Julia, when um, I was at the Cotton Club for the, the last four years I was there, I was one of the showgirls that was featured, you know. Yeah, I remember and, that. Um, but it was almost ready to close up and we were going downtown, mm -hmm. you know. So I went with them down there, I think it was in 35, and we, I was something there, like I was something like that, and I was there for the first season, you know. Yeah. I left the Cotton Club then, and I took a trip to California and uh, stopped off in Chicago to see some friends. Then I came back home. That was, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, let me see. You yeah, stayed in I California came, for a while, but yeah. you stayed quite a few places. Chicago, yeah. remember? Right. For quite a few months. But when I came back home, I understood, I understood that Mr. Michaud wanted to, he was looking for me. He had seen one of my pictures in the lobby in one of the theaters. And he wanted to find out if I would be interested in Negro in, movies, in, in Negro yeah. movies and, and being in the pictures. So uh, I think it was Slick Chester, or one of the fellows, found me, looked me up, or, or, or the leading man that I had. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tucker. Oh, Tucker. Tucker. Lorenzo Tucker. Lorenzo Tucker. Lorenzo Tucker. He was marvelous. He was my leading man. What yeah, a wonderful I fellow he is. Anyway, he That's got me very good. interested, and uh, they all took me to that this little studio, and I met Mr. Michaud, and he was, he's a wonderful man, a brilliant man. He sure. was very interested in me, and he asked me would I uh, be interested in taking a, and being in the picture. So I told him, sure, I'd try, I'd try anything, and, and uh, pictures, moving pictures have, has always fascinated me, although I could never make it, because I never had no real producer to push me, you know what I mean. So, well, uh, I'm glad you didn't, didn't say we, you we, didn't we, have we didn't talent. Get, we, didn't have, sure we, had we didn't have that opportunity in them days, you know. You just couldn't get ahead. So we made the, I think the first picture was Temptation. And, uh, you know, oh, Ethel, I never saw you in any of those four movies you well, made. Well, I begged you to go, but you all were too no, busy. No, no, we were working so were hard, working. I never got a chance. Well, anyway, we made Temptation, and uh, under very trying circumstances at times, oh, yeah. you know, because we had no makeup but you had nice man to write make us. us up, so we had to make up ourselves. I remember some of your fan but, letters. But I uh, knew how to make up, got, but I didn't know whether it would click with how I made up on the stage or whether it would go. Hey, remember those movies. fan but letters just, you got? Just a minute, we just went, we just yeah. figured, well, it would be okay, so we made up the best way we could. Yeah, I, I never got a fan letter in show and business. We uh, wore our own clothes, got you know, no, nobody gave, we had to wear our own clothes, but it was marvelous. We did, we, we made the picture at different places in the little studio over in Jersey. I never will forget it. We used to go over there. Then we made did it. Did you feel like a movie actress? No, not at the time. I just felt it was just lots of fun to make the picture, you know. I didn't know Why didn't you take me those rehearsals like you did to the other I never could things. find you. You were always busy. <laughs> oh, gee. And then the next one I made was Underwear uh, and God Stepped You had those kind of names in those days? Oh yeah, yeah because gangsters half time is our bosses. Right. So we so oh, I yeah, made those I and, uh, some great actors were in that and actresses. Gee, that's marvelous. So, uh, you had a that, nice uh, life. Uh, after after that it kind of faded. I don't know. We never heard any more about it, you know, and I just thought that was the end. But I thought I would uh, go ahead, but it just never turned out that way. So initially I just I did make an appearance for one of the pictures in Brooklyn. Oh, you made one in Philadelphia. I got the copy here. Did yeah, but I made it? this appearance with one of my pictures in Brooklyn. Yeah, this was a picture. And it was quite a thrill because all this the kids grabbed around theater. me and wanted my autograph. This was in Philadelphia, too, I remember.
Sometimes I was there alone. A lot of times I was in the studio by myself. You know, they would be taking just shooting, you. Just shooting me, you know, not even see the other people. Only until they were, you know, when a son was with them or something scene. like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but just like having a it was like play acting. acting. Describe that you know, scene. Describe the scene when your father comes into your room. About what? Did your father comes into the room up the stairs and opens the door. Now see right now, you were getting ready to go to bed. You were getting ready to go to bed. And he comes into in the, the picture. room, right? To try to grab you to get, take you away. Uh -huh. yeah. In the picture. Do you remember? Remember that? Yeah, song? I remember yeah. that part. I remember, uh, not so well, but it was, you know that picture was a fun picture for me. I thought I was having the ball. He came upstairs. But it was very convincing for the audience that you were frightened. Yeah. When he came into scared. your room, he came upstairs and he was kind of drunk. Well, then I was doing a, a heck of a piece of play acting like you're doing. You know, kids are the best actors in the world. Little kids. Mm -hmm. So you have a carryover from that, maybe when you grow up and all of a sudden you, everybody acts anyhow. I don't know nobody that don't act. Every day of their life, they're putting on some sort of show. If people could read people's minds, well, then asking. they would really know what <laughs> acting they were doing. Uh, so that was some fine acting. You know what I mean? <laughs> because that's... Uh, like a fun thing, and the whole thing was like a, a just fun, you know. Let me not don't forget I was working at the cotton club at the time, and when I go back back and forth, then I tell them what I did, and I did get a couple of weeks off one time at the club. But then they, uh, I had to go back to work. Then I come to Philadelphia on the weekends. That's where it was made, by the way. The part I was in. Somebody told me that some parts were made in New York, but I don't think so. Well, at least I don't know. the whole thing was shot. Yeah, because I don't know. know. Because everything I was, yeah. yeah, Philadelphia, that was, um, that was Maybe amazing. they cut out some, you know. The city of brotherly love, which I had a thousand cousins that live there, you know. You and had your relatives. I'm just, saying, yes, all uh, my relatives were there, and when they had the cabaret scene, you know. I said, come on, kids, you only make $15. That's what they paid them the extras, you know, okay. and, all, yeah. I, and they got their friends, that's how they got the scene now. And it, uh, my cousins would bring another friend and everybody, they really thought they were cabareting in that scene. Everybody was having a ball in here. Do you remember any of the people from Scarlet Shames or the actors? Well, I, I remember them all, you know, from working with them those few weeks, but I didn't really, uh, know them all too well. Some I didn't know at all, but some I did. But you must remember, when I was at the studio there, it was, these people didn't have too much money to make that picture in the first place, right? So they're going to do something one, two, three, fast. So you get in there, you do what he tells you to do, and you, I'm back on the train coming to New York. I'm not around socializing with anybody and talking. And I don't know which way they went, but I knew I was catching a train all the time. So the only time I would see them was when they were in a scene or something with me. And by that time, you know, the man had, he had very little film in this room. So he had to use his film up, come rain and come shine. This is what he's going to show. You what about Pearl McCormick? Well, I, you know that I know she was never on a set with me, never. I want to see her when I go for the cut club. See, she was there different days than I was. So I didn't see her, well, you know. Of course, I knew Pearl because she's a dear friend of mine. And still is, but I don't know where Pearl is. I haven't seen her for years. I've been trying to locate her, but so far I haven't. You know, people move away and whatnot. You two were the only chorus girls. 
Yes, but she was a specialty dancer at the time. She always was. The only time that she danced in the course really was when we went to Europe, and she wanted to go to Europe. So the only spot open was that, uh, you know, she had to join the course. And that's the only time I've known her to be in a course. She always did specialty dancing. But all the other others were actors. Yes, yes, I understand that the Lafayette players, some of them were uh, something like that. They were all, well, some of them were very well known and did dramatics and all that. All that. You yeah, know, they well, were, they, probably, they were a really uh, kind of, you know, out of my class, I was nothing but a chorus girl, right? So, I mean, I didn't know anything about acting or anything, so it was kind of fun things with me. And I enjoyed it, you know. Did you it, add them to your mind? Practically, everybody I suppose did. No, nobody ever gave anybody a, a script. But uh, yeah, as I said, you just did what they told you to do, and it certainly wasn't hard, you know, to just walk over here and walk over there, and do this and get shot, what that like that. That's always hard. Did, did you ever something. see the film advertised anywhere after that? After yes, the it played right on. At the, I was working at the Cotton Club, and it played right downstairs. It was the Roosevelt Theater there at the time. And everybody had a ball running down between shows looking at it. You know, they had fun. It was still a fun thing. And I felt ashamed. You know, I, I didn't want them to see me on the, on the screen. You know, like you're asking a kid to, uh, to recite. You know, you say, come, you know, when people, years ago in that company, they would bring the kids and say, oh, I say you're a little bit, say twinkle, twinkle, little stop. You know, you had to do it every time company came in. And this reminded me of that. You know, like I was a little kid again, you know, and then I would bow my head, you know, and say, oh, my goodness. And even Duke, Duke Ellen, <laughs> he was playing up there at the time. His band was playing there. And uh, I met him going into the theater. They had a, a, a recess from the, uh, the rehearsal. And as he was going in, he said, hey, Lucia. He said, come on in with me. And he tried to drag me, and I was ashamed to go in there and look at it with Duke. <laughs> I said, no, you look at it by yourself. When and he came upstairs laughing about it. They all saw it there. When did you see it first? That's where I saw it. At the at that theater. And the, at the Alhambra Theater, that's right, I did play the Alhambra. Uh, I don't know whether that's still there or not. That's a theater. On Seventh Avenue. They did play there. I, that's where I saw it. I mean you went to yeah. the theater and saw it. Yeah. Saw Nobody it. ever showed me anything. You know, like sometimes pictures over there say, Well, maybe now they let you people can, you know, see part of it or something. Nobody didn't show me nothing. I only saw it and then forgot about the whole thing. And I, I didn't hear no more about it all until all this came up about it. All these years later, I, I had forgotten. I had made it really. I, and 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 this time I was looking for to a scrapbook, and, and I might see an old picture or something like that. I didn't even have a picture of it then. Oh, I think I did. I had the one picture where you know, uh, where. The Scar of Shame featuring Lucia Moses or something like that. I think that was the only one I had. So, I mean, I, I don't know, but I enjoyed every bit of it, but I still didn't consider myself an actress, my goodness. Or if I did, I would have went on to acting school and learned something, joined a group. And I'm, okay, I was too happy doing what I was doing. Because after all, I was traveling. How else could I get to go to Europe as many times as I went, unless I went in the course? And people weren't traveling to Europe as much as they are now. You know, people weren't flying to Europe and all that, you know? And uh, that's, as they say, that's the way it was. <laughs>
You made movies with a number of the top actors, Lafayette players. Well, yes, I did. I um, made three pictures, uh, uh, Underworld and Scholarship, I mean, uh, Underworld and Temptation, and God's Stepchildren. Who was your leading man? Lorenzo Tucker, he was a wonderful leading man, and he taught me a lot because uh, I told him it was my first picture, and I was just going through the script book for what they told us to do, you know. Did you ever go around with the movies, um, movies that you made? No, I made one appearance, oh, and that was in Brooklyn. And I think I was 39, uh, 38 or 39. I made a personal appearance with, I think it was a, a temptation, if I'm not mistaken. What was, some it was very the, interesting. what was some of the reactions of the audience? Oh, they were crazy about me, and <laughs> I was quite surprised. <laughs> Gee, I had a lot of fans, and that surprised me too, you know. I didn't expect that. They met me backstage as I came out the door, and they all surrounded me, you know, all the kids and the teenagers and everything. They were very thrilled, you know, like I was a big movie star or something. That's what I, the way I felt that night. Right. Did you ever really want to go on? Yes, I did. I've always wanted to be in the movies. Or, but um, just after those three pictures, everything seemed to have stopped, and I didn't have any manager like you had like to have today, you know. And uh, some of the people disappeared, the big uh, uh, Lafayette players. I mean, I never saw him anymore. I knew Andrew Bishop very well. He was a good friend, a friend of ours, you know, my sister's law. We just knew him. And, he's, and some of the Lafayette players, quite a few of them we knew, but I can't recall their names just at the present, you know. But it was very interesting. So you retired from... Well, I retired after that. After, I don't know what struck me, but I decided to get married and settle down. And, that was that. So I've lived a very quiet life since then because I've been all, all over the world and every way and I was in some very big shows. And I was one of the showgirls at the Cotton Club. And I did a few movies with different, um, you know, just here and there with shorts or something like that. And after that, I, I mean, I had had quite a few years in show business and I just decided to give it all up. It was kind of falling apart anyway at that age, at that time. What do you mean it was falling apart? I mean, uh, like the Cotton Club closed and all the big clubs uptown closed, the smalls and all the clubs downtown that had the Cotton Club, everything just closed. And wasn't as many shows on Broadway. This is 1940. Yeah, in the 40s and 50s, you know, as it is now again. But at the time we were there and really shined, we had quite a few shows. Like I was in uh, Showboat, you know, quite a few, Dixon Broadway. Uh, with Lawrence Mills, Mill Robson, uh, yeah. yeah, Lawrence Mills, with the, uh, all, all the shows, you know. So, look that way when you say. You know, Lorenzo Tucker got an award. For oh, that's a long one. Yes, he got some show awards, which are yes. given out each year. To well, I heard that, award. yes, yes. Have you seen him? No, I haven't seen him in recent years, but I've talked to him on the phone, and, you know, just like that. How do you feel about the uh, awards, the Oscar show awards? Well, I think it's marvelous, and I was so happy when my sister went out last year and took my other, my baby sister, Julie. Manusha went out, and I thought that after all these years, we have even we dreamt that that was just the end of it when we made those pictures. You must remember, after the through the years, we just kind of forgot about them because we never knew what happened to him. You know, Mr. Mature, he we never knew what happened to him. Then later years, we heard that he had passed. But I know he was a very brilliant man and a wonderful man to work with. Yeah, at the Oscar Mature Awards in 1975, 76, I think. Yeah, um, got her award. Yes, yeah, she did. With Right. Sydney Poitier. Right. Alphonse, yeah, that was quite a Diane film for her. Right. All the top performers. Right, they were all there. Yeah. And Hugh Blake and all of them were there, right? Yes. Hugh right. Blake was there. Right. So it was all, I thought it was a wonderful trip for her, and she was so surprised, too, because we just thought that was passe. We didn't dream anything would ever come of it again, you know. It was just one of those things. 
So when I heard this was all turning up again, I was, I was quite thrilled about it and also glad that we were really bringing something forth to show that we made in those days, because in those days, we had to make up our own self, we had to wear our own clothes. But they did. we did have a script in the 36 and 37, you know, when I made that. We had to learn the script. Unlike the silent films, really. Right. And we did take a script, page or two a day, and sometimes I was at the studio by myself, and then sometimes, again, I would be with the cast. Depends on who you were playing with at the time. We'd go over to Jersey, and then made the picture sometimes in the streets, New York, and uh, in the people's houses, and things like that. It depends on what kind of a shot he was going to take. So it was all very interesting at the time.